What's going on guys? We are coming at you with yet another recipe. This one is a shout out to Mega's hometown. Philly. We're making Philly cheesesteak casserole. Really easy, creative dinner recipe the whole family will love. And the key components, in my opinion, of a good Philly cheesesteak, I'm not the expert though, Mega is. And where's the best cheesesteaks to get? Jim's. Jim's. Jim's is on South Street. South Street. Okay, so what's important is I would say green pepper, red pepper. I guess that's not even that important, really. I think the most important is the meat and the cheese. The meat and the cheese. Provolone. You don't want cheese whiz, right? Provolone. Do you go with provolone I usually? Go provolone. Provolone yeah. all day. And then usually you use like some kind of chopped steak, but instead of that, we're gonna be using just ground beef. It's easier and it's easier to find. Really simple, we're gonna cook everything down and then bake it briefly and it'll be a delicious dinner. So to get this going, we are gonna preheat our skillet here over like medium high heat. And we're gonna cook our ground beef. This is a little over a pound, just until it's cooked through like six to eight minutes probably. I like to let the pan heat before I add the meat. And if you're ever on the street, go to Jim's, it can't be beat. Okay, pan's heated enough. I'm gonna add this in. We're just gonna let that cook six to eight minutes, stir it around. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be prepping the vegetables. We got a whole onion, a whole red pepper and a full green pepper. So with the peppers and onions, you can go dices or slices. I'm gonna go dices. Then we got a full onion here also. That looks good to me. So that is all of our veggies. Ground beef is about like, I'd say 60 to 70% cooked and that is when I'm gonna add these veggies. You can also add in other kinds of veggies if you want. You got like broccoli would maybe be good. Uh, maybe like some spicy chilies like poblano peppers or something or jalapenos. So let's just add these all in. So that's looking pretty beautiful. Stir that around. And now while this is cooking down, we're gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And we're also gonna add in our seasonings, which we're keeping it pretty simple. Red pepper flakes, a little bit of garlic powder, and some pepper and salt. So about a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. These are pretty spicy, so you can leave these out if you don't want it to be too spicy. A half teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and a couple pinches of salt. Okay, now the major thing we're sort of looking for here is you want to have all the liquid basically evaporated from the bottom of the pan. So the vegetables, the meat, those all give off a little bit of liquid and just cook it until you see the meat is all the way cooked through and there's no liquid in the bottom of the pan. That'll take probably like three or four more minutes. Okay, so this has about one more minute left to cook. There's barely any liquid in the bottom now. We're gonna add two ounces of cream cheese. This is optional, but it is what makes it more like a casserole and just kind of like blends everything together. Okay, that is looking pretty great. And now we're just gonna flatten it out a little. And we're gonna top it with some slices of provolone cheese. Add in the slices, probably like five or six, just to cover it pretty thoroughly. Okay, that is looking good to me. Now we are going to pop this in the oven, 350 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. And once we pull it out, it's basically ready to serve. We'll be back with a taste test. Oh baby, look at that. You're getting the browning of the cheese on top just slightly. I would just bring this over to the table and let people serve themselves. That would be, you know, the best wow factor as far as presentation goes. You probably want something green to like sprinkle on top. Maybe some Italian seasoning or something could be good. Really simple recipe and a good change up for dinner. Cause you know, you're always trying to come up with creative new ideas for dinner. And this would be a great recipe to add to your arsenal. You could also eat it like a dip kind of. You could do like low carb tortilla chips. You could do pork rinds. Um, you could even do like a low carb tortilla, make it into a taco. Would that be good? Could be kind of good. Let's give this a try. And look at that, boom. I feel like boom is really overused on YouTube. I should not say that. Looks delicious. Let's move this over to the side. If you guys are looking for other dinner recipes, ketoconnect.net, that's where all the recipes are. We have a dinner section, some of the top favorites, butter chicken. And you can see how many people like each recipe too, which is cool. We just added that to the site. So whichever are the most liked ones, those are probably the best ones. And all the nutrition for every recipe is also on the website. So let's get in here. Get a little bit of pepper, a little bit of meat. Is there any rules about cheesesteaks? Like when you order, you have to say it a certain way. Aren't they big about that? You gotta be like, number nine, with the cheese, no onion. 
Oh, that's, yeah. I hate places that think they're cool because they make you order a specific way. Okay, here we go. Flavorful. So I come back in Philly. I lived there for one year with Mega. Not a great city. I don't like it that much, but Mega loves it. You gotta love the place you're from. But yeah, really good recipe. What's best about it is you get all the flavor of a Philly cheesesteak with like one tenth the amount of work. It's really simple. You just throw everything together, put it in the pan, bake it. Comment down below. Let us know if you tried it. Let us know if the family liked it. Check out ketoconnect.net for more recipes and thanks for watching.